exactly the way you wish you could. I look good. I look good. Come on. I'm in love with a girl that I call old school. Sipping on my brandy, I'm feeling brand new. Got the feather in my hat because I'm just that cool. You peeping at my alligators bent kind of slow. I look good. I look good. I look, good. I look exactly the way you wish you could. I look good. I look good. I look good. 27 year old Ricky Romero will make his first start of the season against the Boston Red Sox. Romero, last time out in Cleveland, went through five innings and kept his club in the ball game. Take a look at the Red Sox lineup for Bobby Valentine. The teams have split the first two games of this series. Top of the order, Jacoby Osbury. Blue Jays have been able to handle him, but they haven't been able to handle thus to Pedroia. Five for nine. Pair of doubles and a home run. Pedroia has always worn out the Blue Jays. Gonzalez, Euclid Ortiz, middle of the order. Darnell McDonald gets to start in right. Cody Ross has had a good series. Mike Avila's back at shortstop, and Kelly Shopik, the right-handed hitter, will do the catching here this afternoon. You mentioned that opening day start by Ricky Romero in Cleveland. Through five innings, gave up just three hits. The second inning did him in. The big blow in that game, a three-run home run by Jack Hanahan for Romero. This is his first start at home. He was real good here last year. 16 starts, 8-3 and three with a 293 earned run average in this ballpark. For the Blue Jays, four and six in his career and 13 starts versus the Red Sox, but he has won three of his last five versus Boston. Thing that stands out for Romero, his ERA for his career in those 13 starts against Boston is 12 point or 7.12. They have hit him hard, but you mentioned the last two wins a year ago came against the Boston Red Sox. Win number 14 and win number 15 for Romero. Rubber game of this three game series. Blue Jays won last night. Jacoby Osbury walked in, scored twice in last night's game. First pitch of the ball game is a strike. It's always a good sign when the pitcher gets off to a start like that. We saw that a lot in last night's ball game with Kyle Drabeck using his two seamer against these Red Sox. This is a very experienced lineup, and you have to be aggressive. Bruce Walton, in his pre-series meeting to his pitchers, said, hey, if you want to get these guys out, you better pitch ahead. They are one of the best teams in baseball when they can work the count and get themselves into hitter counts. That is going to be a continual theme that we'll talk about this afternoon. Curveball, did he go? Yes, he did, according to Tim McClellan. A three-pitch strikeout for Romero to start the game. Good start for Romero. That's going to be the key for him, that curveball this afternoon. He's got a late breaker, and it's hard. This time throws it out of the strike zone. Jacoby Ellsbury cannot hold up, and he's his first victim. Ellsbury is now 0 for 7 in the series. Preston Pedroia, we mentioned what a great series he's had. Three hits in last night's game. He homered and doubled in a series opener on Monday night. 2008 American League MVP. A terrific player. Off to a good start. Ball on the strike. Out to prove himself every single day when he takes the field. Pedroia. Blue Jays have not been able to figure him out. They've tried hard stuff the whole series. It's this ball high and deep to center. Rajay Davis on the run, on the track, makes the catch. Ricky Romero used all of the ballpark to retire Pedroia. Another fastball by Romero. Let's take a look at the scattering report brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners helping homeowners. You see the fastball 71% of the time from Ricky Romero. Now against the Boston Red Sox, his changeup, they neutralize that. He throws it 18% of the time, but the Boston Red Sox lay off his changeup better than anybody, I think, in the game, so I think the curveball is going to have to play a big part. He might have to switch that curve and change up ratio. That's what he's going to have to do to cool off these Red Sox bats. Ricky Romero looks back at J.P. Aaron Seabia after this pitch. Watch him. He's going to ask Aaron Seabia where that pitch was. Did it catch too much of the plate? Just making sure he was seeing that pitch correctly. 
Gonzalez hits it high, left field, Thames on the run, on the track, will make the catch. A couple of well-hit balls, but they stay in the park, just eight pitches. And Ricky Romero's out of the first. game and Edwin Encarnacion has been swinging a hot bat all the way back into spring training. In this series he's three for seven with a homer. He's driven in three and his OPS 1.357. He's done a good job protecting Jose Bautista in that fourth spot in the lineup. Ben Francisco gets the start against the left-hander John Lester here this afternoon. Lester pitched on opening day for the Boston Red Sox at Detroit so he was matched up against Justin Verlander. When you do that you have to be almost perfect Lester threw seven innings, gave up just one earned run, and he got a no decision out of that because Verlander matched him through those seven innings. There are his numbers, some of the best in all of baseball, and all he does is win. He's got a winning percentage of 691, which is the third highest since 1900. One of the premier pitchers in all of baseball, John Lester, is now 28 years old. You know, Escobar. Will lead things off for the Jays. First pitch swinging. It's a little flare in the right field. Darnell McDonald will come in and make the catch. Jose Bautista talking to Ricky Romero on the bench. Yeah, everybody knows Romero's had his problems against the Boston Red Sox in the past. And Bautista, he tries to help everybody out. And it'd be interesting to see what that conversation was about here early in the ballgame. So one pitch, one out. Now it'll be Kelly Johnson. He's 0 for 5 against John Lester. Down and away. One of the things that we have noticed about Johnson, especially early in the season, is how well he has had at bats. Very patient. He has walked five times already this year. That leads the Blue Jays. He has done a good job. And John Farrell flipped up back and forth. Using Kelly Johnson in the leadoff spot toward the end of spring training, but likes him ahead of Jose Bautista. Pops this one high into the air, into left field. Cody Ross drifting into foul ground makes the catch. Got to be at your best when you're facing John Lester. Let's take a look at the scattering port for Lester. He'll use his fastball. You can combine his fastball and cutter because it's one of the best in all of baseball. He can go inside. He can go outside. He'll mix in a curve, a sinker, and a changeup. Very evenly distributed amongst all of his pitches. But I think the key tonight, and John Farrell was talking about that for the Blue Jay hitter, is laying off that cut fastball on the inner half. He likes to get you to chase after that ball on the inner half. It's actually a ball because it moves so much, especially to the right hander. You lay off of that, make him bring that ball over to the plate. Jose Bautista, there's that cutter, late movement down and in at 91. When Lester first came into the big leagues in 2006, he had glove side dominance. He could wear out that inside corner to right handed hitters. And that's that cutter that Farrell's referring to. Jammed ground ball. Avilas waits on it, and 
Lester has a quick inning. Took him just seven pitches to get out of the first inning. The left-hander is setting a real tough tone here this afternoon. His numbers against the Boston Red Sox are not pretty. This is his 14th start. He has a losing record and a very high opponent's batting average. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the earned run average at 712. He's thrown 67 innings, and I think command is the importance. Red Sox batters, a lot like the Yankee batters, they take a lot of walks. Ricky has walked 39 batters in his 67 innings versus the Boston Red Sox. If you can cut that down and make him hit their way on, I think he'll be fine. Kevin Euclid's a ball in the strike. We mentioned Ramirez's desire to stay ahead and avoid these hitter counts. I think that's when the Red Sox are at their best when they have the count in their favor. On the ground, backhanded by Escobar, strong arm on the money to Encarnacion. Four straight retired by Romero. One of the things that. Escobar possesses is a very strong arm from shortstop. He can backhand a ball like that and plant that right foot and pick up steam as that ball goes across the infield. It's pretty to watch him throw. Defense has really been good early on. Escobar made a great over the shoulder catch in center field in last night's game. David Ortiz, another tough out for Ricky Romero in this Sox lineup. Ball just missed away. The Red Sox are the only team that Romero has pitched against that doesn't swing at his changeup. And that changeup is such a good pitch for Romero, but they do a good job of laying off. That ball is popped in the air. This ball should be playable. Escobar over on the warning track makes the catch. Escobar had to make that catch in foul ground because of the shift. Utilized against Ortiz. He's got the whole left side. Does you know Escobar? Playing a slight pull at shortstop. We got nobody's over there. See, he's got the whole area to run it down and makes it look easy. That pop up you talked about yesterday ended the seventh inning. Jacoby Ellsbury at the plate. A couple of runners on. That ball falls in. It could be a different story. Darnell McDonald gets the start this afternoon with Romero on the mound. He's five for 14 against the Blue Jays left hander. And he has given the Blue Jays a lot of trouble over the last couple of years. There's a breaking ball that backdoor cutter catches the outside corner. One of his best pitches that he'll use to the right handers. That backdoor cutter. Another bouncing ball. Big hop for Lori. Ricky Romero is off to a good start. He's retired six in a row.
roster over the last three seasons. In his 13 starts, he has a 9-2 and two record, and they've hit under 200 against the big left-hander. Not a lot of balls that were hit hard against John Lester, and it's that cutter. He'll run that right in on left there. John Farrell has put some, some extra right-handers in the lineup this afternoon to combat that. They just need to stay off of that pitch. Edwin Encarnacion off to a good start. He's got a homer and six RBIs. To me, he looks to be the most comfortable Blue Jay bat in the order right now. And I think it started over the second half of last season. He put together a good second half for the Blue Jays. Alex Anthopoulos realized the potential that right-handed power bat could mean to the lineup. So they went out and re-signed him. And really, he has carried the team so far offensively. Bouncing ball foul outside of third. Encarnacion hit his first home run of the season in the seventh inning with two outs. Watch how short this swing is directly to the ball. And when you hit it, you know it. Edwin no knew he got that one for his first home run. He also chipped in a couple of stolen bases last night. Right king ball down and in. Boy, Lester has really got the full complement of pitches. We mentioned when he first came to the big leagues, he had glove side command of the cutter, breaking ball, and the fastball. And then at the direction of Jason Veritek, he added that arm side strength, and now he makes you worry about both sides of the plate. But whenever a pitcher can sink the ball and cut the ball to the outside part of the plate against a right-hander and sink it and cut it to the inside part of the plate. I mean, as a hitter, it's almost like trying to hit find six or seven pitches to hit. And then it's premium stuff at the same time. Donna Jones battling and fouls it out of play. John Farrell talks about pitchers that can do that, and he say they can make X's on both sides of the plate. Having the ball break in both directions, and that's when you really have command of the strike zone. The good ones can do it on one side of the plate. The great ones can do it on both sides of the plate, and I think John Lester is in that category. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out here. Bottom of the second. Lays off that inside pitch, and that's key. Farrell mentioned you've got to take that borderline pitch inside. Stay off of it. And he talked was talking about Edwin Encarnacion before the ball game today that his discipline in the strike zone has been very good so far in the season. Working counts, and when he gets the pitch he likes, he hasn't missed it. Full count. Val tips it off the glove of Kelly Shopik. You mentioned John Lester and how he stacks up against some of the best in baseball. He's tallied 15 wins and 150 strikeouts in each of the last four seasons, starting in 2008. Just one of three big leaguers to reach both those marks every year. The other, C.C. Sabathia and Roy Halladay. There's a fastball away. It's Encarnacion. First strikeout of the ball game for John Lester. He's a power pitcher from the left side with command, control. Remember the cutter that was inside that Encarnacion fouled off and he goes right back to the outside part. Ben Francisco gets the start as the DH today. There's that outside fastball for a strike. Francisco making his first start of the season. Came in the ball game in Cleveland as a pinch hitter. Well, you and I are both right-handed hitters, and when you face somebody like John Lester, we always like to hit against left-handers. Yeah. Lester's not <laughs> left-handed. Yeah, there, there's a couple of them you don't want to face. And, and the guy that he reminds me of from my era is Jim Abbott. Jim Abbott had that great cut fastball, and even for a right-handed batter, you could go up there, you could look for it, you could sit on it, and when you would swing the bat, you would think it'd be on the barrel, and the next thing you know, you're picking your bat up and walking back to the plate, or back to the dugout because he just sold you off. Ben Francisco just won for eight against John Lester. He is truly one of the elite pitchers in baseball. Working with Bob McClure for the first time and McClure really has been impressed by John Lester. 
Another jammed ground ball to third. Euclid has plenty of time. Five straight retired by Lester. You take a look at John Lester and how he matches up against the top shelf left handers. There he is with CC Sabathia, Cliff Lee, Joe Saunders, and Mark Burley. Pretty impressive list of southpaws. Certainly is. Lee, Sabathia, Joe Saunders, and Mark Burley. The thing that separates Lester from Saunders and Burley, and maybe even Cliff Lee, is the power that which he brings to the pitching mound every night. The strikeouts. First pitch strike. You don't really appreciate it until you stand next to John Lester. He's six four and weighs two forty. Brett Laurie, his first at bat of the afternoon. Out in front of that breaking ball, Lester's ahead. Isn't it amazing the size of starting pitchers around baseball? I mean, they are big men. We saw Justin Masterson in the opener. He weighs two fifty. Derek Lowe is six seven. Ubaldo Jimenez six five, weighs two thirty. They're all big, strong guys. Felix Dubron's a big man, also, who we saw here in the the home opener. Oh and two, two outs, bounced up the middle. Pedroia near second. Goes quickly to retire. Brett Laurie just as advertised. The pitchers have the upper hand so far. with Blue Jays here at Rogers Center and there's a good compliment of youngsters from school out here. Always exciting as you hear an extra little buzz in the stadium when the kids are here during day games. It's school day here at Rogers Center and everybody <laughs> wants to marry Brett Laurie. Marry our teacher. <laughs> <laughs> what a good job that was. You think that was her idea? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the kids idea because okay, they want kids. them to come to school. Yeah, here's a project we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure the arrows point at me. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Cody Ross fights it off. Ramirez done a good job with Ross. He's jumped ahead. Fell behind early. He's only thrown two of seven first pitch strikes. That pattern will catch up to him against this team. But he's ahead of Cody Ross. Get ahead early against these Red Sox batters with your fastball. Lined in front of Eric Thames. Ross with his second 0 2 base hit of this series. And then uh, keep attacking the zone. This time the ball was up. Aaron Sebia wanted it down, but it just floats up, and you can see Ricky upset with himself. And he knows he has to bury that off speed pitch. 
Just have to make a better pitch to a veteran hitter, even with two strikes. Mike Velas back in the lineup. Nick Punto started at shortstop in last night's game. First pitch strike. Ricky Romero is a master of getting double plays. Last year he was third in the American League and grounded into double plays behind him. Blue Jays turned 28 with Romero on the mound. Nobody out. Since 2009, he has thrown 84 ground ball double plays, which has led the major leagues. He can do it when he turns over that fastball or get the batter out in front with his change up. Avila showing bunt pulls the bat back. Mike Avila started the first four games at shortstop. On Sunday became the first Red Sox player with a three hit game. He also drove in three runs. Sat out lit yesterday's game with a little bit of an ankle problem. Came out of the box his second at bat. Bouncing ball past the diving Kelly Johnson into right field. Back to back hits to start the third. Won the left field on a high breaking ball. This time Avila's inside out pitch. Looked like the cutter that was down and in, and he kept his hands inside. Just out of the reach of Kelly Johnson. And Kelly Shopping, the catcher. Shopping is 0 for 12 against Ricky Romero, getting the start in place of Jared Salta Lamacchia. First and second. Here's the bunt by Shopik right out in front of home. Aaron Sebia goes to third for the force. Well, we've talked about pitching and defense, and the Blue Jays have been on their toes defensively. Tough to get the ball down when you've got the type of fielder that you have in Romero. So he tries to deaden it, but it's J.P. Aaron Sebia comes out of the shoot, gets rid of that mask very quickly, and right away he knew that he had a shot at getting Ross at third base. Does everything right, does Ross. And look at Lit, or excuse me, look at Laurie act like a first baseman and take that throw, stretch, and know that you've got that force out at third base. Heads up play. And a very big play in this inning. Turn the lineup over, but it's the left-handed batting Jacoby Ellsbury now with runners at first and second one out. Ellsbury 0 for 7 in the series. Breaking ball inside that hung inside and went around the plate. Ellsbury, as we mentioned, started this series, wore out the Jays a year ago. He led all opponents in runs scored, hits, and RBIs against Toronto. They just couldn't figure him out. The whole league couldn't figure out Jacoby Ellsbury last year. 364 total bases for Ellsbury. The last leadoff hitter to do that, you have to go all the way back to Bobby Bonds in 1973. Yeah, that's Bobby Bonds, not Barry Bonds. That's right. Bobby Bonds. Ellsbury was an all-star, won a gold glove, and won the Silver Slugger Award. Finished second in the MVP voting. 2-0. This is going to get down in front of Thames, and the Red Sox are going to take the early lead. Ellsbury, with his first hit of the series, drives home Mike Cavillis. The Blue Jays have done a good job of keeping Jacoby Ellsbury off the bases. This is just good hitting. He stays with this pitch. It looked like a pitch down and away from him. Instead of trying to pull it, stay right with it. They mentioned this lineup and how they give Romero problems. And there's Ellsbury. 10 for 26 coming into this game against Ricky Romero. And look at the lofty averages. And those are all big damage guys in this Red Sox order. They've always given Ricky Romero a tough time. Right at the top of the lineup, Ellsbury and Pedroia. They are going to create a lot of RBI situations for the middle of that order. Still first and second. Shopik at second, Ellsbury at first. One out. 
poked foul. He had to reach for that pitch off the plate. He's in the hole 0 2. This inning began with Cody Ross getting a base hit with two strikes. It was 0 2, and he touched Romero for a single. Ross was erased on a fielder's choice, but Michael Velas scored on the Ellsbury single. Down and in. Good job by Aaron Sebia blocking that ball. Got to keep the double play in order here, and that extra 90 feet is always costly. That turned the fortunes around for the Red Sox in game one of this series. A ninth inning pass ball set up the whole inning. Then the sacrifice fly because that runner was able to advance to third base. Ricky Romero, one of the tougher pitchers because his stuff is so good to keep in front of you, but Jay Pierre and Steve has done a good job. One and two. Tried to check his swing. The appeal at first is denied by Brian Lundy. Pedroia checked his swing on that breaking ball down and in. From the side, we've seen it called a lot worse. Looks like he certainly went too far, but mm -hmm. that is one of the most difficult calls in baseball. It's always a gray area. Two and two. Off speed pitch and Pedroia shakes his head. Just a second strikeout of the ball game for Romero. Use that change up when you've got two strikes. A lot of times that Boston lineup will lay off that change up early in the count, but you have to respect it when you've got two strikes on you. From the best change ups in all of baseball. Yeah, and it gets Pedroia. Romero still not out of the woods. Adrian Gonzalez. Steps in. Bouncing ball. This should do it. Kelly Johnson takes a couple of steps and throws out Gonzalez. Romero minimizes the damage. Boston has taken a 1 nothing lead. On Sportsnet, brought to you by the all-new 2012 Honda CRV, proud sponsor of the Honda Home Opening Series. Blue Jay fans are still shopping around for the new merchandise. Blue Jays have gone back to their original look with a modified version of the logo and the maple leaf prominently displayed on the jersey. It's a good look. Today they're using their alternate tops, the blue tops. First afternoon game of the season. Eric Thames 0 for 3 against John Lester. Gets to start. Why do you think Thames got the call to play in left field against a tough left hander? I think John Farrell has made it clear that he is his left fielder. He is going to give him every opportunity to keep it. 
He has faced some tough lefties. He drives this ball high and deep to left field, but it slices into the seats. And he has had success against some of those tough lefties so far early in his career. Get his first big league home run against Palm Hollum of the Pittsburgh Pirates and then took Cliff Lee deep here in interleague plays. Right away center field and he doesn't shy away from him. He's just going to continue to improve against lefty pitching. Well, when you watch Thames at the plate, he gives himself a chance to get a hit. Lefty, righty, it doesn't matter. Hard thrower, soft thrower. By keeping that front shoulder in. The problem that he has had is when the left-handers start throwing breaking balls off the plate. A little bit more plate discipline will help Eric. Thames had a good at bat against Justin Thomas in last night's game. The left-hander came on. Thames worked him for a walk. Lays off that breaking pitch. That was a pivotal point of the ball game in the sixth inning. Blue Jays had a couple of walks. And that set up a bases loaded situation for J.P. Aaron Sebia, who delivered a two run single. Red Sox lead at 1 nothing. Thames battling. Well, he made a great point about Eric Thames and how he doesn't give up anything. Yeah, he's going to strike out and he's going to have some tough days against lefties, but. It's not because he's not focused and grinding at the plate. Has a chance. He, he gives himself a chance to get base hits against tough left-handers. And there it is. A breaking ball that hung out over the plate and Thames delivers. First hit of the ball game against John Lester. That's how you do it. You got to take the ones off the plate. Keep that front shoulder in. That's the whole key right there for Thames. It's a short swing and he didn't give in to him. Head straight down. Look at that. Right on the baseball. Well, what a bonus. You get your left hander on base to start the inning. J.P. Aaron CB, the catcher. Takes first pitch strike on the outside corner. Aaron Seavey off to a slow start. Just two for 19 in the early going, but he has a homer and driven in five. How about that? Those two base hits have produced five RBIs for Aaron Seavey. Thames with a good lead at first. Ball in the dirt. Shot back. Not in time. It's second. Boy, another good read by one of the Blue Jays' base runners, and you've got to take advantage when you're in tough against a good pitcher. Pick up that 90 feet when you can. Stay out of the double play. Blue Jays have worked on this. You're the runner at first base. You can see the flight of the ball, and as soon as you see it in the dirt, just take off. It is so hard for a catcher to block the ball, find the ball, and then throw it all the way down to second base. You should be able to get there even though the ball doesn't go very far away from the catcher. Good reaction for the Blue Jays to gain extra the extra 90 feet. And Sebia chases one off the plate inside. It's one and two. One and two. And Sebius stays alive. Well, you can see he's grinding, trying to hit that ball to the right side of the infield. And Lester's trying to counteract that by pounding him inside. He and Shopik know it. They know that Aaron Sebius is going to try and punch it to the right side. So they have thrown a couple of balls on the inner half. To hit the ball the other way, you've got to keep that barrel behind you when hitting that inside pitch the other way. And breaking balls will make you get out in front. He rolled over that and then pulled it fine. Blue Jays have done a great job of running the bases. Last night in the ball game, they advanced on bouncing balls on the infield. Edwin and Carnation did a great job running from second to third on a ground ball to the shortstop. And Sebius strikes out. 
You've seen the world's greatest athletes grace the cover of Canada's all-new sports magazine. Now it's your turn. Go to sportsnet.ca, my own cover, to put yourself on the cover of Sportsnet magazine, and that's what Pat and I did. We just decided it was about time that some great athletes grace the cover of Sportsnet's magazine, so we went online and... That's the result. You too can do that, just like that. Created that. <laughs> you could do that with a computer and some images, things like that, right? And we might be going a little bit overboard to call ourselves great athletes, but we were on the cover. You did. You, you <laughs> called us great athletes, and I appreciate that. Thank you. One out. Rajay Davis, base hit down the right field line. That's going to tie it up. Thames comes in to score. Davis is headed for third. Pedroia's relay throw is not in time. Rajay Davis sparks the energy in this ball club whenever he's in the game, and he didn't waste any time against John Lester. Whether it's in the field running down balls in center field or on the bases, stealing bases, coming all the way around on an extra base hit, and he can do it with the bat, too. As soon as this ball ricochets into that corner, it dies. Rajay is thinking three right now. The play is right in front of him, and he knows that he's going to make it all the way to third base. No chance for the defense to get the ball from the right field corner all the way to third base against Rajay Davis. We are tied at one with Davis at third and one out. The Sox are playing the infield in. I think everybody knows that runs can be at a premium this afternoon with these two big left-handers going. Even though it's just the third inning, Bobby Valentine's got to bring his infield in. Rajay Davis, his first triple of the season. He led the Blue Jays a year ago with six triples. Boy, here's a real tough situation for Escobar. Murphy is told to lay off that inside pitch, and that's right where Lester is going to go. And that's where he has been rolling over that ball. He has been telling, you know, Escobar to make him get the ball out over the plate so you can play your game. Rajay Davis at third base is getting a huge lead. Blue Jays are playing contact with just one out. He's going to break on anything hit by Escobar. This ball is driven toward right center. McDonald over to catch it. Davis tags, and he comes in to score. Escobar delivers. The Blue Jays have taken the lead. Boy, you talk about fundamental baseball. We have seen it on display here in the third inning. Not just hitting, but base running. Davis gets a third base, and then Escobar cashes him in by making Lester get the ball out over the plate. Ricky Romero has the lead. Kelly Johnson with two outs and nobody on. Up and away. Boy, Eric Thames got everything started when he hung tough against John Lester and let it off with a single to right. Fouled off a couple of tough pitches from Lester, laid off the breaking ball in the dirt, and then took advantage when he hung one to him. Passing on information to Colby Rasmus, who hopes to get in at bat against Lester down the road. Rasmus getting the day off. Davis penciled in to center field. Adam Lynn also not facing Lester today. For his career, Lynn just three for 24. So John Farrell gave Encarnacion the start at first. And if you're going to have an off day, why not miss John Lester? <laughs> Two and one. Downstairs. Ricky Romero now in his fourth season in the big leagues probably has a admiration for John Lester certainly one of the premier left handers in baseball. A two out walk. Well, a couple of left handed batters in this lineup have given Lester a 
problem here in the third inning. Single by Thames and then the walk to Johnson. And young pitchers all the time will watch established veterans to see what they do, how they try to set up hitters, which you don't want to do, I think, as a young player, and try to be the guy you're watching because they're two different pitchers. Lester is pure power with great movements, both sides of the plate. Romero is more stuff. Use that change up just a little bit more in a good hard curveball. Jose Bautista with Johnson at first. Up and away. Bautista grounded to short his first time up. That ended the first inning. Bautista had a rough night at the plate last night. He struck out three times, ended up 0 for 4 on the night. Ball gets away from Kelly Shopping. It looked like he got crossed up, took his eye off the ball. The Blue Jays will get an extra 90 feet. Pass ball charge to the Red Sox catcher. Looked like it was right there. Did it go through his glove? No, well, he's not looking at the webbing of his glove, but it certainly looked at it. Now he's checking the laces and the webbing, but you're right. It just looked like out missed it. Yeah. A runner in scoring position now for Bautista. Edwin Encarnacion is one of the hottest Jays right now. And he's on deck. But they're still going to be careful to Bautista. Yeah, you have to. Jose has three home runs against John Lester in his career. Just hitting over 200, but three long ones. Looking on the inner half, takes a strike on the outside corner. We have seen some borderline pitches go against Bautista throughout the early going this season. It happened to him in Cleveland. Two and two, two outs. Kelly Johnson at second. He walked and advanced on a pass ball. Blue Jays have taken advantage of a wild pitch, and the pass ball has another base runner in scoring position. There goes Johnson. Bautista hits it off the end of the bat. A little squibber to Adrian Gonzalez. And the Blue Jays will leave a base runner. But they have taken a one run lead. Rache Davis with an RBI triple. here and we talked about Romero being aggressive and pitching ahead take a look at the Boston Red Sox by count in 2011 when they were behind 0 and 2 they hit 186 
one and two, 199. But when they have the count in their favor, they're one of the most dangerous teams in all of baseball. They are patient. And again, Euclid gets the count in his favor. Yeah, as good as anybody when they get ahead. That has been their game plan. They like to dictate tempo at the plate when they are up there. Ball on a strike. And their experience. They don't panic. They let the pitcher get himself in trouble. Euclid takes more pitches than anybody in baseball. He really works the pitchers well. It can be intimidating when, when you see these big hitters up there. And I think some of the young starters for the Blue Jays are starting to figure it out. That's Dave Magadan, the hitting coach for the Boston Red Sox. The young pitchers, I think, have started to figure out you have to pitch like anybody else. You have to throw strikes. You have to get ahead early and not be afraid to throw to contact. And you have to pitch ahead. Look at the difference between the 1 1 pitch. If you fall behind 2 and 1, as opposed to 1 and 2, Euclid is. 343 points better when he's got a two and one count compared to a one and two count. That's ridiculous. But that's why he works the count. He wants the count in his favor so he can eliminate pitches. Then he just zeroes in on one particular pitch and he wears you out. And if you know that pitcher well enough, you can zero in on one pitch in one location also. Let me give you the raw numbers for Euclid, and it's amazing. When he has the count at two and one, he hit 548. One and two, 175. So just like John Farrell has preached to his pitchers all year long, the one-one pitch is the most important pitch of the game. You can say that about just about every one of these Boston Red Sox hitters. On the ground, big hop for Escobar. Euclid is retired on a 2-2 pitch. Adrian Gonzalez over 400 on a 2 and 1 pitch. Just about 200 1 and 1. You mentioned Euclid. The list goes on and on. David Ortiz the same way 402 on a 2 and 1 count 175 on 1 and 2. The experience of these hitters they want to get the count in their favor and there's no panic in their approach. Ortiz popped a short his first time up. Ricky Romero, as we mentioned, really had a tough time with this lineup because they wouldn't swing at his changeup. So to address that, he started using the curveball more effectively, and there it is. Use the curveball any part of the count, as you see Laurie in short right field with Ortiz at the plate. Use the curveball, and that's coaching. You go back and you watch tape and you watch the game and you try to put together a game plan. Popped up. Center field. Escobar calls for it, makes the catch. Two down. The all new 2012 Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Ricky Romero's ball club scored two in the bottom of the third to take a 2-1 lead, and he's retired the first two batters after that. That's always important. Keep the momentum in your dugout. Keep that momentum on your side. Finishing up that thought about Ricky Romero, pitching coaches, the coaches will get together, and if one thing is not working, and it wasn't early in his career versus Boston, let's change it up. And Romero can do that because he's got the weapons. Now you can remember how Ricky Romero was so frustrated because he was being abused by this ball club. For his career, the Red Sox have hit 328 against Romero. For comparison's sake, Baltimore 236, Tampa Bay 186. And then the Yankees, they only hit 250 against Romero. So Romero started to think that the Red Sox had something on him. He was tipping his pitches or something they saw that allowed them to wear him out and you can see how intently they're watching Romero there's another curveball and that does the trick Darnell McDonough strikes out Ricky Romero has a one two three fourth inning that curveball has been bread and butter for Romero today third strikeout
check in on double-a new hampshire here hutchison making his second start of the season now he has made a total of five starts in double-a he's a perfect five and oh very impressive era and the thing about hutchison is he is just now getting comfortable at double-a he made the stop at double-a to end the season made two starts and he is really starting to gather some momentum another one of those young pitchers who started last year in low a ball he made his way all the way to double-a got 15 innings in in double-a so he's going to go back there and start it if something happens if there is a need we're, we might see some of those double-a pitchers here Edwin Encarnacion starts things off in the fourth looks at a pitch just off the plate outside it's a ball on the strike John Farrell, the manager, has a background in development. He was with the Cleveland Indians as their development coordinator. He was the director of player personnel in the minor leagues. And he has mentioned it several times since he's become the manager. When you're the farm guy and you're into development, you say, leave those kids alone. When you're the manager in the big leagues, you're saying, boy, I think he can pitch right now. <laughs> <laughs> he knows in his heart that, that the kids need a little bit more seasoning in the minor leagues to polish off their game. But in his mind, he's like, I need those arms right now. Well, you'll remember back at the end of spring training a year ago, he thought maybe that young third baseman, Brett Lowry, should be in the big leagues. On the ground. Tavilas waits on it. From deep in the hole, throws out Encarnacion. That's why having a farm director and all the coaches that you have in your minor leagues, the players will tell you when they are ready to come to the big leagues. Well, and two, you have layers of experience. You have the farm director, you have the general manager, you have the managers at the respective levels. Everybody weighs in and everybody makes reports on players. Ben Francisco gets jammed and that's going to hit in foul ground. So you make sure that one guy is not making all the decisions. You have a farm director. He can make recommendations and then you have roving instructors in a particular position. How about the scouts that the Blue Jays send in to watch their own players to report back to Alex Anthopoulos? Yeah, you want as many eyes on those players as possible just to get a bunch of Different opinion. This one's popped up. Kelly Shopik right out in front of home plate stays with it. And there are two outs here in the fourth. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Are they ever going to lose? They're 4 0 to start the season. Tigers with a terrific offense. You look at their rotation. How about Shields against Verlander? That's what you get. When the number ones come around, you know, everybody's talking about the offense for the Tigers. I like their bullpen. Yeah, that bullpen is deep. Jose Valverde. Joaquin Benoit, Octavio Dotel, right-handers that have done well. And Valverde blew a save in the opener first time. Last year he was perfect all season long, so that rattled them a little bit in Detroit, but they have yet to lose. Phil Coke throws hard. Daniel Schlereth from the left side. Yeah, Adrian Gonzalez knows that Phil Coke throws hard. He <laughs> drilled him in that series when the Red Sox were in Detroit. Oh, he's hanging tough. Boston jumped out to a one nothing lead in their half of the third inning, and the Blue Jays stormed right back. RBIs by Rajay Davis and Yunel Escobar. Escobar had a sack fly, and that gave the Blue Jays a 2 1 lead. Lori lays off that pitch. What do you see from Brett Laurie at the plate so far? Well, he's always a very excitable guy. When he when he plays the game of baseball, a lot of moving parts at the plate right now, and he, it's almost like he's jumping at the ball. Murph is trying to get him to stand, stay back just a little bit more. Dwayne Murphy, the hitting coach, stay back on that back leg. Don't go out there and get the ball. Let it come to you. Murph does a great job with every one of these hitters. It just takes a while for 
hitters to gain the confidence at the plate once the regular season begins. Two and two outside. Lester looked like he had a little trouble with his landing area there on the mound. Had a little bit of groundskeeping as he delivered that pitch well off the plate. Watch after the ball gets towards home plate. Lot Lester's reaction, like his spike stuck a little bit in that clay. Full count, two outs. Bounce toward third. Euclid comes after it. Wow! Bang, bang at first, and Brian Runge just kind of assumed it was going to be an easy play. Brett Lorry made it very close. In fact, he might have beat it. Take a look at the effort. This is what you get every day, and he was safe. Now it's time for a Blackberry update. New Jay Central. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn at the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. Jays have the lead. Cody Ross got things going for Boston back in the third with a single. Oh, what a play! My, oh my, we talk about pitching and defense, and how about Brett Lloyd? That ball was past him. Brian Butterfield talks about Brett Laurie's glove side range is probably the best in the American League, and it's on display right here. He gets a quick first step. That's the whole key to that play. Watch as he sets that quick first step. He's got such good feet, and they're so fast to take away a hit from Ross. He thought he got robbed to end the bottom of the inning, so he said, you know what? I'm going to take one away from Cody Ross. <laughs> Off the end of the bat, Kelly Johnson. Boy, what a turnaround. Defense will get you out of tough situations. <laughs> Brett Lorry hustling down the line as he always does. It was bang, bang with the naked eye. And you look, the umpires, boy, they're proven right more often than not. Yeah, Brett Lorry and number one will give you 110% on every play. Never gives up. And these umpires, they are so good. You know, you're right. From the naked eye, it looked like he was safe. Yep. But Brian Rungi all over it. They're the best. They have the ability to hear that foot pound on the base and the ball pop into the glove. That's a big part of what they do around first base. Well, we talked about the pitching and defense of this ball club early on, and defense was really a problem last year. There were eight different starters at third base last year. And Brett Laurie figures to start just about every single game at third this year. And I tell you what, for a young man playing third base for just the second season, he has few peers defensively. He has the tools. 
and he also has the work ethic and the heart to get out there and make himself a good player. He's got one of the best infield instructors in all of baseball in Brian Butterfield. He'll work with everyone. But he's got the tools quick feet good hands good hand eye coordination strong arm and a desire to work right a desire to be good. He made a play last night behind second base on the shift against Adrian Gonzalez where he backhanded a ball in short center field and gunned him out at first base. Another play for Lori. Oh, what an inning. Just seven pitches for Ricky Romero, and it all began with a whale of a play by Brent Lori at third. Baseball season at jshop.ca. jshop.ca has the largest online selection of authentic Blue Jays caps, t shirts, jerseys, and more. Visit jshop.ca or call 1 877 Jays Shop. And you've got to get the alternate top the Blue Jays are wearing today, and why not put Brett Laurie's name and number on the back? Boy, this merchandise has been selling like hotcakes. People really love the New look, and I'm one of them. How about Eric Thames? He got things going against John Lester, delivered the first base hit, and started a two run rally in the third. Hey, what? He's a very interesting young man to talk to. He's got an awful lot of confidence, and he loves to work at his trade. He'll be out every day. On the back end of that fungo from Tori Lavello working on something. When he first came up here, it was charging base the baseball on base hits to the outfield and properly catching the ball in one motion as your momentum's going to home. Then it's throwing. Bouncing ball. Adrian Gonzalez, the gold glover, makes the play. Went out in the fifth. Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware and building center location. Homeowners helping homeowners. Rubber game of a three game series. A pair of aces on the mound. John Lester for Boston. Ricky Romero for the Blue Jays. Your ace is supposed to win the series for you. First pitch strike from Lester. Aaron Seabee has struck out his last time up, but he was picked up by Rajay Davis, who hit an RBI triple right behind him. John Lester came through the Red Sox organization. He was a second round pick in 2002. That's right, a second round pick. The Blue Jays picked two spots ahead of Boston that year. And they took David Bush. 
But I'll also give you another name in the second round that people overlooked. The third pick in the second round in 2002, Joey Votto. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Oh. <laughs> How were they not number one picks? That's what I want to know. Uh, John Lester, too. Obviously, he hadn't filled out to mm -hmm. where he is right now, but a big, strong left-hander thrown like that. That's pretty good use of a second-round draft spot. That's why you've got to have those great scouts. They right, see Lester. that type of stuff that Lester has, and you project three or four or five years down the road. Ball is a paintball on the outside corner. Yeah, he is really doing a number on the corners. And CB strikes out for a second time. It's three in the game for Lester. Well, we told you we had a good matchup here on Wednesday afternoon. A pair of left-handers, and they're doing their thing. Rajay Davis with a triple in his first at bat. He came in to score on a sack fly by Yuna Escobar. Was after that pitch. Davis has had good at bats every time he faces a left-handed pitcher. His first action of the season came in Cleveland. He came off the bench as a pinch hitter in the ninth inning of the Saturday game. And line to left. Euclid's foul ball. Home plate umpire. Ted Barrett didn't waste any time. He called a foul ball as soon as Euclid touched it. Hold on, boys, down the left field line. Hold on. Ground screw. Go back. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the fastest in all OB right there. Organized baseball. They're coming out. Tim McClellan, the crew chief, having some fun. That's Ted Barrett's call, the home plate umpire, because the ball did not get to third base, and he was all over it. As soon as you see that bouncing ball toward third, you jump out in front, and here comes the ground screw. Take it off. I took it off. Go back, Ace. <laughs> but they'd have been fine had it been a fair ball. <laughs> in the third out of the inning. Davis goes to far. Brian Rungi calls him out. Buster with back-to-back -back strikeouts. <laughs> now the ground crew. Come on, Ace. Bring him out. Sportsnet, Arash Madani and Ivanka Osmak taking in the ball game today. From Westman's holiday coming up to the old ballpark. For baseball on Sportsnet, the Yankees will be at Baltimore. And the action begins at 7 p.m. Eastern time. That was
Asbury pulls one in the hole. Kelly Jackson is there. One pitch, one out to start the sixth. Well, that's a good start here in the sixth inning. One pitch, one out. Kelly Johnson showing some range at second base. He had worked all spring on that type of movement right there. Giving ground. So you can cut that ball off. He felt that he was going across instead of back giving ground and it showed back there to get Ellsbury. Take a better angle and gives you more range. Ricky Romero has really settled down. He's retired eight straight now. Kyle Drebeck had a similar run in last night's game. He retired nine in a row. Well, that's the kind of momentum you want from your starting pitching. Just continue to give your offense those clean innings where you can come in and try to add to your lead. They did it in last night's game. The Jays actually scoring seven runs, had a 7 1 lead into the ninth inning. Take a little pressure off that bullpen. Two and out to Dustin Pedroia. Three and up. Pedroia with five hits in the series, a home run, a couple of doubles, and two singles. He's over two so far this afternoon. Romero throws a strike. Ricky Romero now 27 years old. Really entering the prime of his pitching career. This is his fourth full season with the Blue Jays. He's gotten better and better with each year. And that's what you like to see. Ricky Romero will not settle for anything. He wants to be the leader. He wants to toe the rubber against the likes of John Lester. He's learned so much about himself and how to get big league hitters out. Escobar deep in the hole it's short scooped by Encarnacion. Two outs in the sixth. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Tommy Garcia and Johnny Cueto the Starting pitchers in that ball game. Adrian Gonzalez. Curveball missed downstairs. How about St. Louis? They lose Albert Pujols, and I know it's early. They're leading the National League in hitting. Over 300 as a team. Won three straight. They're five and one early on. This ball is looped into center field. Jose Bautista makes a fine sliding pitch. Takes one away from Gonzalez. And the Blue Jays have been perfect on defense this afternoon. Making plays all over the diamond. The outfield defense a year ago was a problem. Not so here in 12.
possible bobblehead dolls. It'll start with Brandon Morrow's bobblehead doll given away on Sunday, May 20th when the New York Mets are here at Rogers Center. Unan Escobar's bobblehead will be given away Sunday, June 3rd against the same Boston Red Sox. Ricky Romero will be given away Sunday, August 19th. Not Ricky Romero, but his bobblehead against the Texas Rangers. The first 20,000 fans each game will receive a bobblehead. You can buy a flex pack of tickets and collect the full set. Call the Blue Jays directly at 416-341-1234. And now Escobar fouls it right off the top of his toe. Oh, man. That hurts. He wears that shin guard to protect his ankle and the top part of his foot, but his toes look like they're exposed. And that's why they want those right-handed batters to lay off that cutting fastball. It's so tough to square up that one right off the toe. And you can see he's got that extended guard on the top of his instep. But this one hits beyond the protection of that guard, catches him right on the point of that shoe, and you can bet that that one bit him pretty good. Pat Hudson, the assistant trainer, is out to you. help out. There you can get a good look at that protective guard that's over his instep. But it caught him just beyond the protection of that guard. Covers just about that whole shoot. up the spot where the ball hit. That cut fastball coming mm. in on you. So tough to lay off of. And then so tough to keep fair. You've done that before, boy, oh boy. And you get one real good. And that will create some blood that will collect under your toenail. And then it builds up the pressure. And it can last for a week, ten days. So comes right goes, inside again. Goes right back nah. in there. Hey, don't do that. I just fouled one <laughs> off my foot. <laughs> <laughs> I fouled a ball off of my foot and not feel it for the rest of the game. Yeah. And then about four hours later, I'd be sitting around going, oh, my goodness, my foot hurts. I mean, that, that's the trauma that you have when you get hit like that. Upstairs, it's a ball and two strikes. Quite a pitcher's duel here this afternoon. A 2-1 ball game. Only five hits in the game. John Lester and Ricky Romero hooked up in a good one. Downstairs. The Red Sox have three Gold Glove winners on the field. First baseman Adrian Gonzalez has three Gold Gloves. Dustin Pedroia, the second baseman, has two. And Jacoby Ellsbury, the center fielder, won his first last year. There's a bouncing ball to third base. Euclid throws out Escobar. But the Blue Jays have been playing like gold glovers throughout this entire series. When you get the good pitching, you've got to take advantage of that and get good defense. Colby Rasmus, Adam Lynn, that's just a sensational play. Brett Laurie this afternoon. And Jose Bautista this afternoon. There's been a couple of other ones. Uh, you know, Escobar's over-the-shoulder catch. In last night's game saved a couple of runs, but better athletes on the field. More stable defense also. Everybody has contributed and that theme was played over and over again. There's a bouncing ball just foul. We talked about the formula for winning championships and I don't care who you are. You look around baseball. Generally the teams that are playing in the postseason. Are among the leaders in ERA. They're among the leaders in defense. And they always have among the top starting staffs, guys that pitch deep into the games. Kelly Johnson, little topper back to the mound. Lester with the underhand toss. Two outs here in the sixth. Well, it has worked for Tampa Bay. With that great starting pitching. They don't hurt themselves. They, they don't create more outs in, in the inning. I mean, that's the same thing that Alex Anthopoulos is, wants to do and make right here in Toronto. Tampa Bay a year ago was eighth in the American League and runs scored. They committed the fewest errors in Major League Baseball. 
and they had more starts of seven innings or longer than anybody in the American League. And they made it to the postseason. Keep Bautista your, goes after the first pitch. Keeps your bullpen fresh. And then you can start slotting guys in that you don't have so many innings to cover. Guys stay fresh and stay fresh longer. You can figure out ways to score runs. There's a million ways to score runs. The home run and hit and run, do all that kind of stuff. You got to defend against that. Yep. And that's what happens when your starter is putting up a series of zeros. The hitters know hey, it's not going to take many to win it. Ricky Romero's leading by one. Jose Bautista is caught by an outside fastball. Three up, three down for Lester here in the sixth. John Lester with five strikeouts. This time the outside fastball gets Bautista. Well, for your iPad, iPhone, Blackberry, or Android device. Listen to live radio broadcasts to receive batter by batter information for every game. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. Kevin Euclid will lead things off for the Red Sox here in the Sun. Don't want a short change, Euclid. He, too, won a gold glove in 2007 when he was at first base for Boston. Last two years, he's moved back across the diamond to third with the addition of Adrian Gonzalez. Came up as a third baseman. Played his college ball at Cincinnati as a third baseman and an outfielder. Kevin Euclid's battle injuries a year ago. It's just 258 for the season but still chipped in with 17 homers and 80 RBIs. Trying to get something going here in the seventh. He's got a 3-0 count. Romero comes back with a strike. Ricky Romero threw eight pitches in the first, eight in the second, then 18 and 13 in the third and fourth. But came back with a seven pitch fifth inning and a nine pitch sixth inning. Well, he's been real economical. And that'll help him as this game goes along. That one inning did him in his last start in Cleveland when he threw 43 pitches in the one inning and he couldn't stretch it out. Could only get five innings out of him. Broken bat, big hop for the third baseman, Lori. That's 12 in a row retired by Ricky Romero. Get all the ground ball outs too. You know he is on his game when that ball is moving late in the strike zone and it's down and the batters are beating it into the ground. He has kept his left side very active this afternoon. David Ortiz steps in. He's popped up twice here this afternoon. And there's that shift with Brett Laurie 
nearly standing side by side with Jose Bautista in rank. Breaking ball for a strike. Boy, that curveball has been a good weapon for Romero in his last three starts against Boston. When you start to throw it for strikes, you put a little something extra in the minds of those batters. He's mixing it up, too. Now the curveball, this one's bounced. He's starting it early in the count sometimes. He's using his fastball early in the count. He'll use his, uh, excuse me, his curveball as a strikeout pitch. He's got a fastball, but all he can do is foul it back. Ricky Romero takes a lot of pride in being the leader of this pitching staff. And I think one of the pivotal moments already in this young season was after that second inning Cleveland. After he gave up four runs and threw 43 pitches, he came back to the dugout, calmly set his glove on the bench, put his jacket on, and said, okay, boys, give me some runs. Curveball this time, Ortiz checks. And then we saw that same demeanor from Brandon Morrow. Morrow gave up a two run home run after an air by Aaron Sebia. Just calmly came back to the dugout and then last night. Kyle Draybeck. How about Draybeck? Mm -hmm. Two and two. Missed. Full count. I asked Ricky about that inning, that second inning after his start. I gave him a couple days. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> and he said, yeah, I was fired up. I, I wanted to do something like that, but I, I know that I have to sit there. People will be watching me. And he kept himself under control. And that goes a long way with a young pitching staff. Breaking ball, pull foul. Boy, there's a good pitch by Romero. He wants that ball back. But they'll throw it out of play. Romero asking Carnacion for that baseball. He liked the way that one felt, and he'd thrown a good breaking ball with it. Remember when you were playing at the corners how pitchers always call for that ball no matter if it was fair or foul Give me that ball back because they're comfortable with that baseball certainly Breaking ball Shifts gonna get Ortiz again Kelly Johnson throws him out Ricky Romero we mentioned him make he's in his fourth season as a regular this is his 95th career start and we've compared him to some of the other established starters that have pitched here for the Blue Jays through 94 starts it, These are the pillars of the Blue Jay history. I think in starting pitchers Halliday Steve key and Henkin, but it's Ricky Romero with 42 and 29 an outstanding winning percentage and a 3-6 earned run average and remember the last couple of years he has had to go up against the number ones of the other teams which you can tack on five, six, seven more wins. Darnell McDonald quickly in a hole, 0 and 2. He threw some games last year where he was just matched up with a pitcher that was just a little bit better. Tim Hudson comes to mind. He threw a great ball game down there and actually lost that game on a home run by Hudson. 2 nothing. 0 and 2. Missed outside. Yeah, Romero wants to be matched up against the best. And he watched one of the best in Roy Halliday when Romero first arrived on the scene with the Jays. Two and two. Roy Halliday paid Romero the ultimate compliment when he saw him in spring training. They both matched up against each other in Romero's last start. And Halliday says, Yeah, I knew he was going to be good. And now he understands and he has the confidence to be an ace. Full count. Romero jumped ahead 0 and 2 and then threw three wide ones. Ricky Romero said Roy Halliday was the first to text him after he got his multi year contract. Congratulated him for earning that contract. There's a fly ball hit deep to left field, but Eric Thames has plenty of room. Ricky Romero has retired 14 straight. He leads the Red Sox 2 to 1.
the Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. First day game of the season and the fans have come out to the tune of twenty five thousand two hundred and eighty five. Good turnout. And the Red Sox and the Jays are giving them a good show. Just what we expected when these two lock up right here. Ball in the strike to Edwin Encarnacion starting at first base this afternoon. Edwin made 22 starts a year ago at first base. Up and away. You know, he just looks more comfortable at first base. Encarnacion last year at third. Made a lot of errors, throwing errors. When well, they moved him into the DH spot, and the bat took off. Plays off that inside pitch. 3 1 count. It's always had very good hands and, and good range. First base, he looks natural. Three and one. Swing and a drive. Hit to left field. Coley Ross is going to make the play. And Curtis Schoen has been right on it throughout the series. Ball might have got in just a little bit on Encarnacion. It looked like it might have been a cut fastball. You know, he got it off the end of the bat just a little bit too quick. Just wasn't the solid type of hit like we heard last night from Encarnacion. He just missed it. The late movement took it down near the label. Got it off the barrel. Ben Francisco. Getting his first start of the season has gone over for two so far. Blue Jays have just two hits. Rajay Davis had a triple to drive in the first run of the ball game. Eric Thames started things off with a single that started the inning. That two run rally came in the third inning after the Red Sox had taken a one nothing lead. Get into center field. Ellsbury has plenty of room. Two outs. The all new 2012 Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Indoor baseball here at Rogers Center this afternoon. We had three great crowds for this three game series. Of course, the opener drew over 48,000. Last night's crowd was 26,351 and a 25,000 turnout here this afternoon. Good start to the season. This is an upbeat, energized team, and yep. the fans have bought in. Players appreciate that, too. Talking to Brett Laurie around the batting cage yesterday. He was asking me what do you hear is going to be in the ballpark. And I told him I, I had heard 27, 28,000. He says that's good. You know, it just energizes everybody. 2 0. Oh. There's a strike. You know, you'd like to be able to say, oh, we come play the same way every single day. Most people do, but boy, oh boy, when you've got a full house in there. Screaming and hollering in support gives you a little extra energy. It's a good cut right there by Lori. I think he's upset with himself because he feels he should have hit that one. Lester won't give you too many center cut pitches. He works the corners as well as anybody in the big leagues. You know, we mentioned John Lester and his 15 wins a year ago. He and Romero were tied with 15 apiece. Lester received the second highest run support in the majors. His team scored 6.86 runs while Lester was on the mound. Only Derek Holland of the Rangers was given better support. They scored 10 runs or more five times for John Lester. And that's what the Red Sox will do. They'll give you a, a lot of support. Lester has thrown 100 pitches here 
this afternoon. He went seven innings against the Tigers in his first start. Allowed a run on six hits. He's allowed two runs on just two hits this afternoon. So John Lester has done his job for the Red Sox coming out of the shoot. As a hitter, when you are, you know that your big guy is going that day. You can just relax because you know he's going to go out there and shut down the opposition. He's pitching into the seventh for a second straight start. Full count, two outs to Lori. Ball is driven to right. Darnell McDonald backs up, makes the catch, running away from the infield. Another three up, three down inning for John Lester. But the Blue Jays hold a one run lead. Third inning, Rajai Davis at the plate with a runner at first base. He is going to send this pitch down the right field line, an inside out swing by Davis. Lines it down into the right field corner. It rattles around over there, allows him to come all the way around to third base. He had six triples last year, 2011. This is his first of 2012, and it's a big one. He would score later on a sacrifice fly. The difference in the ball game. And defense has been important here this afternoon. The speed of Rajay Davis has made a contribution. The Blue Jays took advantage of a wild pitch and a pass ball got them into another scoring situation. But they're really playing good defense behind Ricky Romero, and he has retired 14 straight as he's set to start the eighth inning. Cody Ross has hit the ball sharply twice this afternoon. And a single in the third to start that inning and then was robbed of a base hit by Brett Lurie on a whistling line drive to third. Speed pitch in there for a strike. One and two. Well, this is the big batter in the ball game. Eighth inning of a one-run game. You want to retire that leadoff hitter. And what you don't want to do is start putting the cart before the horse. Get that first hitter. Go pitch to pitch. And he does get that first hitter. And Brian Rungay rings up. Cody Ross said he went too far. The curveball again, working for Ricky Romero. You can just see Romero now fourth big league season how he's just starting to work his way through this lineup. Young pitchers when they first come out they start thinking boy I'm into the eighth inning I've got a one run lead I've got to be perfect Not Romero he's taking it pitch by pitch taking his time. First pitch swinging Mike Gavilas hits it to Lori at third. 16 straight retired now by Ricky Romero. Keeping the ball on the ground again. Number nine hitter Kelly Shopik. Shopik has gone over two.
First pitch strike. Starting pitching has been a real concern in the last several years for the Blue Jays. And how about the start Blue Jays got from Alvarez on opening night? Six innings of four hit ball. Kyle Drabeck followed up with five and a third of three hit ball. And Ricky Romero has taken it a step further. Very encouraging early in the season when your starting rotation can give you the type of innings and the type of stuff. Bruce Walton was hoping for John Farrell was hoping for. We showed it last night. It's the second youngest starting rotation in all of baseball. And Romero dispatches the Red Sox in the eighth. A pair of strikeouts. Ricky Romero has retired 17 straight Red Sox. Now it's time for an update. Here's Jamie Kemble and Greg Zons. Matchup, it doesn't play out. That hasn't been the case here this afternoon. It's a whale of a pitcher's duel, a 2 1 ball game, only five hits in the game. John Lester and Ricky Romero have matched each other pitch for pitch. Lester's got five strikeouts and he has retired. Well, his last hit that he gave up, we have to go back to the third inning. It's the last time that he's given up a, a hit, it's the last time he's given up a base runner was the third inning. And Romero's doing the same thing. Lester's retired 13 straight. Ricky Romero has one up them. He's retired 17 straight. Eric Thames, well, he had a big at bat in this game way back in the third. A leadoff single off John Lester. First hit of the ball game for the Jays. Lester. First of just two. Lester can be so tough against left handers. Lefties hit 207 against them last year. It's the third lowest in the American League, but Eric Thames stood right in there on that breaking ball and kept that front shoulder in. Blue Jays were 23 and 19 a year ago against left handed starting pitchers. They were 8 and 10 against the Red Sox in the season series. And if you're planning on moving up in the East, you better turn those numbers around. Sign. Well, the one thing you're going to get in the American League East, you're going to get good pitching. So you've got to be able to handle good pitching. Beckett and Lester, Dubrat was outstanding. Bard, I thought, was very good. Got stronger as the game went along. And then all that pitching in Tampa and the Yankees. Night in and night out, you're going to get a good one. Josh Beckett. Will open things up for the Red Sox at home on Friday. Tampa Bay will be into town, and the Red Sox, they've got a tough schedule to start the season. 3 2 to Thames. Cut on and missed. Six strikeout for Lester. The all new 2012 Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. 
Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Jay Pierre and Sebia has struck out twice against Luster. Goes after the first pitch. One hops it to the glove side of Pedroia. Two outs. Ricky Romero has been in command. And they both pin. Not much going on down there. You mentioned it uh, early on. Uh, a couple of seven pitch innings, eight pitch innings. He's only sitting at 90 right now. So he's got plenty left in the tank to try and finish this one off here. He's had three eight pitch innings, one seven pitch inning, and a nine pitch inning. That's how you pitch late into a game. Rajay Davis drove in the first run of the ball game with his first triple of the season. Davis has three RBI. Had a two run double in Cleveland. Boy, I'd love for him to get on base right now. With just, two outs. Just to create something. Every time he gets on, it seems like something good happens. You know, Escobar has an RBI on a sack fly. Escobar and Davis. How about that? Really shows the balance of this lineup. Davis gets a start because John Lester is on the mound and he drives in a run and scores a run. Then the leadoff batter, who's been struggling to start the season, comes up with a big RBI. Sacrifice fly to right. Davis has a good game plan on his mind right now. That's to get on base. He's going to have to challenge him. And he'll do that. A two out walk. Ajay Davis is aboard. He has a steal already this season. He had 34 a year ago. Well, you know he's going to get out there and he's going to try and get in the scoring position. What you know Escobar is going to have to do here is maybe take a pitch. I'm not afraid to hit with one strike. He might have to take some to get Davis a chance to get in the scoring position. You know Escobar. Big lead by Davis. Throw over. Huge lead at first base. And there he goes. He was going on the first move. The throw is in the dirt. Not in time. Rajay Davis was going on the first move. And even though it was to first base, he had the speed to beat the throw. Saw the sign from the catcher to throw over. And you're right. Lester just a little window dressing throw over to first base. But Davis with that speed. Outruns the baseball. Gets that hand in right before Pedroia can get back down to make the tag. And now a runner in scoring position. Bob McClure, the pitching coach, got to talk to John Lester. Just a chance to help Lester gather his thoughts. It's a one run game, and Lester's not coming out of this ball game. The bullpen is quiet. He's your number one. Get the chance to finish it. Now there's no guarantee that Rajay Davis is going to stop at second base. We have seen him steal second and early in the count try to steal third. Yeah. He gets a great read at second base. Davis. Has the ability to steal third. He did that on Saturday at Cleveland. After he came into the ball game as a pinch hitter, he stole third base in the 12th inning and came in to score. Nobody's watching him. Escobar base hit into center field. Davis is around third. There's no throw from Pedroia. The speed has contributed to an insurance run. Escobar drives in his second. 
three one Blue Jays. You know what John Farrell couldn't have drawn it up any better than that right there. Two out walk a stolen base and then an RBI single by Escobar right back through the middle fastball that's up and in. Rajay Davis with that great speed there's not even going to be a throw. Cuts that corner at third base and scores easily. That's a huge insurance run. Little cushion for the Jays. Rajay Davis has had a big day. Scored two runs and has driven in a run. And his second steal of the season is a huge stolen base. Davis makes things happen. Kelly Johnson drives it to center. Ellsbury retreats and makes the catch, but the Blue Jays had a big insurance run in the bottom of the eighth. Ricky Romero has held the Red Sox to one run on three hits. He's got a two run lead as he takes them out here in the night. by Hazel May. She'll take a look at the baseball schedule, all the afternoon games going on today, and she always take. She will also take a preview look at the hockey playoffs begin tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time. Join Hazel May for connected. Ricky Romero is connected here this afternoon. Eight innings of three-hit ball. Ricky Romero has seven complete games in his career. This is with the first pitch his longest outing against the Red Sox prior to today September 14th. Last year at Boston a 5 4 win he went eight innings and allowed four earned runs. Defensively Colby Erasmus has come in to play center. He'll push Rajay Davis to left. Eric Thames is out of the game. Elsberry taking all the way as Romero. And that's good. That Aaron CB has gone out there to talk to him, slow him down just a little bit. Look at the numbers. That's 93 pitches, five strikeouts, no walks. Just what you want. Ricky Romero has retired 17 straight. Sergio Santos loosening up just in case. Elsberry's probably going to take a couple of pitches here to get something started, and he gets a four pitch walk. The first base runner for the Red Sox since the third. See, first base on balls issued by Romero. How big is that insurance run in the bottom of the eighth? Looking huge now. Where you are in the lineup, 
Who's coming up for the Red Sox? Dustin Madroya 0 for 3. There's a strike. We've got a pitch ahead. We've talked about it all afternoon. And Romero jumps ahead of Pedroia. We mentioned Romero was the third best in the American League at turning ground ball double plays. He'd love to get Pedroia to hit one on the infield right here. Only C.J. Wilson and Matt Harrison, both of the Rangers, had more double plays turned behind him than Ricky Romero. He has gotten 11 ground ball outs this afternoon. And that good sinking fastball has helped. Up and away. Don't change anything. Romero has thrown 97 pitches. Gonzalez is on deck. Each team with just three hits. Three and one. The Red Sox will make you work. Walks start the ninth inning. John Farrell. The wheels are spinning. He's got Santos ready in the bullpen. Riggy's just got to get back to what he was doing in the game, not worrying about. Where the pitch is going, just throw strikes. Saw Pete Walker telling the dugout that Santos was ready. Santos was charged with a blown save and the loss in the opener on Monday night. Adrian Gonzalez, so for three so far, takes a first pitch strike. Tell you what, you got to keep your eye on Ellsbury and Pedroia in this situation. They're the tying runs. They can steal. Pedroia had 26 last year. Ellsbury, he was a 30-30 man. 39 steals. Cut on and missed the breaking ball. Gets Gonzalez to chase. It's been an effective pitch for him all afternoon. That good, hard curveball. That time out of the strike zone, he gets Gonzalez to fish for it. Gonzalez in the series is one for nine. Topped foul. Gonzalez wore out the Blue Jays last season. He slugged 815. That led the majors in slugging against one team. He's in a hole 0 and 2. First and second, nobody out. Outside. Not a bad idea. Cut the fastball away from him. He had thrown him a couple of slow curveballs. That time tried to. Get Gonzalez to freeze on a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Again, pitch by pitch right now for Ricky Romero. Hit high into center field. Ellsbury tagging at second. Pedroia tagging at first. Here's the throw to second, and Pedroia is in. Boy, that ball was hit on the warning track in center field, and both. Ellsbury and Pedroia read it perfectly. They went back to tag, and now the potential tying runs in scoring position at second base. 
Heads up, heads up play. Watch Kelly Johnson. He knows what's happening. The throw's got to come to second base. Try and make that runner Pedroia put on the brakes. Rasmus gets back, plants that back foot, and uncorks a pitch or a ball to second. But Pedroia, you're right. He and Elsberry read it. Ricky Romero will leave with one out here in the ninth, holding the Red Sox to three hits. Santos makes his fourth appearance of the season. He's 0-1. We mentioned that loss came on opening night here on Monday. Came into the ball game trying to protect a 2-1 lead. And Santos was charged with all three Red Sox runs that scored in the ninth. Boston has scored in the ninth inning of each of the first two games of this series. That's the veterans that the Red Sox have. They make you work for it all the way down to the last out. Sergio in that game you were just referring to is a little bit amped up coming out of his delivery could not control his off speed pitch his breaking ball for a strike slow things down just a little bit more just make good pitches and you'll be fine his stuff is outstanding Santos with an opportunity to close things out for Ricky Romero Ellsbury at Third, Pedroia at second. Blue Jays lead three to one. Kevin Euclid has faced Santos just twice. He's 0 for 2. Infield is back. First pitch slider right down the middle. Infield playing deep. Anything on the ground, the infielders want to smother it and keep that ball on the infield so Pedroia, the tying run, can't score. Back to back slider. Santos is ahead. That was the pitch that he was bouncing. On opening night, that time free and easy. How do you lay off that pitch? 0 and 2. That's that wipeout slider that serves Santos so well. The only right handed batter who might be able to do it is Euclid. He doesn't strive when he gets to two strikes. You see him very little movement in his lower half. He'll start to use his hands. That's why he is so good with runners in scoring position. Santos had 92 strikeouts a year ago. Euclid stays alive. Only David Robertson of the Yankees had more strikeouts out of the bullpen in American League last year than Sergio Santos. He had 92 strikeouts in 63 in the third inning. That of course with the Chicago White Sox. Got a couple of pitches that he can get you out with. Fastball, that slider that you were talking about. He's been working on his changeup. Tried to slip a fastball by Kevin Euclid. You Red Sox, excuse me, Pat, this series just four for 21 with runners in scoring position. Blue Jays done a pretty good job of pitching out of tight situations. They've got a good one up there at Euclid who will battle you. Two and two. One out. Right. Head right back to his bread and butter. That great slider. Euclid is down. 
Last season off of off speed pitches, Kevin Euclid's hit 160. That's in the books for the Blue Jays. They know that he had trouble with a type of slider like that, so he went right back for that slider for the strikeout. The DH, David Ortiz. Red Sox down to their last out. Ellsbury at third, Pedroia at second. The shift is not as exaggerated. Laurie stays at third. Escobar is up the middle. Kelly Johnson is deep, but Don't straight away at second. Don't want to create too many holes in this situation here with two runners on. Bouncing ball. Escobar is short. This should do it. The Blue Jays win. Sergio Santos picks up his first save as the Blue Jays closer. Ricky Romero is in the books with his first win of the season. And Santos with an opportunity to redeem himself after the opener on Monday comes through. And they put him in a dicey situation. Second and third. Just one out. Dangerous hitters in Euclid and Ortiz. He strikes out Euclid for a big second out and then gets Ortiz for the ground out to get Romero his first W of the season. John Farrell has to be very pleased with the effort he got from Ricky Romero. Romero held the Red Sox to a run on three hits. At one stretch of the ball game, he had retired 17 straight. Didn't walk a batter till the ninth inning. The defense really was tight again this afternoon. Romero gets it done. The game just two hours and 13 minutes. A classic pitching duel between John Lester and Ricky Romero. Pitching and defense when you're throwing strikes, you're working quickly like Romero was doing to keep the defense on its toes. Brett Laurie made an outstanding play. Jose Bautista with a play out in the outfield. And everybody contributing to this win this afternoon. Let's go downstairs to Tony Ambrosio, who's standing by with Ricky Romero. Thank you very much, Buck. Ricky, just a two out shy of a complete game. But after that third inning, what did you do to quiet down the Red Sox batters? Well, those guys are very patient, so you got to go out there and throw strikes and uh, and keep them off balance. And I was able to do that. I had a good sink going, so a lot of ground ball outs. And uh, the defense did a tremendous job. You know, they did. They made some good plays and. Uh, and, uh, you know, just, just pounded the zone. You talked about that defense. Do you feed off that when your teammates behind you come up with a big defensive play? Absolutely. You, you got to feed off of that as a pitcher. You know, they're playing their tails off, too. And, uh, you know, Laurie, Laurie made a tremendous pit, uh, play. And Bautista and then Uni in the hole was tremendous, too. So, in all, a great team win and a great series win. You had struggled earlier in your career against the Red Sox, but you now have had three very strong starts against them. What have you done differently against them in recent start? Well, one, I don't worry about the past. It's all about the future and what you can do to get better. And, uh, you know, they, those guys will make adjustments next time next time around. And uh, and I just got to go out there and just pound the zone. And, and, and if I do that, everything else just takes care for itself. Ricky, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's send it back upstairs now to Jamie and Greg in the BlackBerry Broadcast Studio.